my name's Lara. Um, I am an archaeologist. I sort of was an archaeologist on the England Wide Community Archaeology Program Citizen, which was Heritage Lottery funded 2015 to 2018. And behind the lens, I'm pointing at the screen like you can see what I'm doing. So behind the lens up there, that's Nadia Bartolini, um, who is a geographer on the transdisciplinary academic project Heritage Futures. I'm going to talk about our collaboration and work with volunteers at Orford Ness. Oops, there we go. Um, so Citizen worked solely on coastal and intertidal archaeology. And our mission was, as here, uh, to raise awareness of climate change and coastal erosion, to enable volunteers, uh, or to work with volunteers so they could identify, record and monitor coastal erosion, um, and then to support them, to give them enough support and the skills and enthusiasm so they could carry on um, after we finished and without us anyway, while the project was still carrying on in, independently, and so they could also inspire others to take part and teach others. Um, I'm going to hide the mouse because I keep pressing that, I don't need to. Um, so our results were uh, exceeded all our original targets. Um, so I put up some big fat numbers because we're quite proud of those. Um, our funding has come to an end, um, but there was a contingency plan or contingency budget. So, so people can still carry on using our app to uh, record features and the map will still carry on being updated and the map will remain live for, I think, something like 20 years, something like that. So... Um, so it wasn't a project that's just ended. And anyway, we've applied for funding and we're waiting to hear. Should be imminent. Um, um, hopefully we'll have funding for another three years that we take us to 2021. Um, Heritage Futures was, is a four-year uh, UK Arts and Humanities Research Council project, um, 2015 to 2019. Um, it was supported by four different universities and a diverse group of partners worldwide, including Citizen. Um, their mission was to explore how to better plan for the future by comparing practice across a whole range of disciplines. Uh, if you're in Manchester or near Manchester, you're quite near Manchester, really recommend the exhibition at Manchester Museum. It's running till 2021, and that looks at all their work across all the four themes, which you can see here. Um, profusion, illustrated by racks of archive shelving. Um, uncertainty, which is illustrated by project partner S. Corby's Forschmark Nuclear Facility in Sweden, and diversity, uh, illustrated by Svalbard Global Seed Bank. We worked with them on the transformation theme. Um, they were focusing on three landscapes within this theme, uh, three landscapes and practices, rewilding in the post-agricultural Coa Valley in Portugal, land reuse in post-industrial Cornwall, and uh, heritage management on the ex-secret military site of Orford Ness in Suffolk. And here is, for those who don't know, Orford Ness is a fantastic place right on the coast. Um, it's a 16 kilometre long spit of shingle, that was almost, <laughs> said that wrong, um, <laughs> lying from 0 to 4 metres above sea level. Um, it was drained uh, for sheep and cattle in the medieval period for grazing and became a secret military um, testing site from the outbreak of the First World War until the late 20th century. In 1993, it was taken over by the National Trust. Um, it's now a national nature reserve um, covered by about eight different protected site designations, including Ramsar and SSI. Um, there's about 50, over 50 different buildings and structures, five of which... Uh, listed and a whole group, uh, the Atomic Weapons Research Establishment buildings are scheduled ancient monuments. Early management plans by the National Trust decided the buildings not in use, protected or, any of the main, or on any of the main visitor paths would be left to decay naturally and wouldn't be saved. Um, as well as uh, historic change, Orford Ness is constantly undergoing physical change. It has an extremely dynamic coastline, it loses about a metre a metre of shingle a year, and I think 100, 150 metres since 1881, they reckon, built the coastline. Um, this ground marker um, was used in ballistics trials and illustrates the issue. It's now gone entirely. There was about that much left when we were there in March. And, yeah, I'm fairly certain that's gone by now. Um, so Citizen and Heritage Futures have been collaborating on the site since 2015, carried out recording with the volunteers, including four residential weekends, 
which were awesome. Surveying and monitoring the fragile shingle shelf and other features. We also started to create a, a level, Historic England Level 1 record of all the buildings on site to enhance national trust records and to assist them with management of the site. Um, as, I, as I said, Citizens' aim was sustainability, meaning it was important to build a, volunteer, uh, a group of volunteers that would become volunteer-led and could work directly with the National Trust since our funding ran out. Um, I recruited volunteers by advertising locally, using local contacts, and I built a really strong core of volunteers, which was wonderful because it's not really an area that actually has much of a local population as such. Um, I mean, yeah. So I think actually the best way to show you what everything that happened there is this fantastic film made by Nadia. Oh no. There we go. What I do feel sad about is when something isn't recording properly. I was recording buildings uh, in the nick of time before they were destroyed. And then that's uh, that's the form that people fill in. They take photographs, do different things about what state is in, and what state of time is at, and we see it. So this is what we're using today to go out and see all the um, that's all the Coast Guard cottage, lighthouse, Coast Guard cottage, the target, and the police tower. Citizen just brings it so much more closer, more tangible. Instead of reading about it, you're actually doing it. Um, you're getting to feel the stuff, walk the ground. I'd love to have been here during that heyday just to see what was going on. Um, but times change, and as a historian, you begin to accept the fact that things can't stay the way they are. Uh, things move on, history moves on. And, uh, in that respect, uh, is pretty much what you'd expect to find. Uh, but there's a little bit of nostalgia in there as well, which says, uh, well, I'd like to go back in time and see what was going on here. I like industrial landscapes. I like to go to places where there's decay. I think that's different, perhaps, from destruction. And decay is something natural. This is my feeling. <laughs> Because the coastline is changing constantly, there is always that variety of the things that are there one day will be gone you know, soon after. And particularly this area of coastline, um, that's very true of because things that uh, the coast recedes so quickly, the things that you can see, see the old pillboxes that stood on the cliff top are now lying on the other out to sea in certain places. Um, so it, it just indicates how so much is being lost. Um, and of course, in the same way, so much is being revealed as, as one thing gets washed away, something else gets revealed and the sequel moves on. And it's just a, a very dynamic and fascinating um, process. I do a bit of archaeology and I love the Roman period and, and I've done quite a few Roman sites. But this really brings it back into context, it really brings it back to within living memory. Because I can remember working here, I can remember talking to the guys in the pub who worked here. I suppose my approach to loss since joining this project has perhaps changed a little bit because the places that I've worked and the things that I've seen, loss has actually been a process of discovery, I think, because um, we're losing, I suppose, little bits of landscapes, but what that is doing is revealing more information about those places and maybe even the people that were living there, working there, doing whatever. So, loss is not necessarily 
a bad thing. Relatively smooth. Okay. Um, so, transdisciplinary working, the benefits have been huge. Um, collaboration has, collaboration with Heritage Futures enabled us on Citizen to think much more about the stories we tell, how we tell them, and why we tell them, and how, through what we've learned, and by the end of the project, and this is hopefully if we get funding for the next three years, we're really going to put into practice all of this and think about how how we can reach and how we can work with a much wider range of people in the future. Because of the methods of Citizen, it was relatively, um, was relatively top down. Um, and we did engage with the sort of traditional group of people that you engage with who did absolutely brilliant work, but we didn't engage really beyond, work really beyond that, which is something I really, really want to work with over the next three years. Fingers crossed we get funding. Um, so through our link with Heritage Futures, though, we've had the opportunity, space and encouragement to consider more deeply the value that places hold for people. We've been able to think about the ways that humans and non-humans interact with each other and think about why, how and why we save things for the future and if we save things for the future. We've also realised, through working with the National Trust particularly, that ultimately um, there has to be more emphasis on the total environment, not just the archaeology in the environment, but the whole thing. Um, working with the National Trust, it's highlighted the dynamics of managing a naturally and culturally dynamic and significant landscape. It's really highlighted the practical need for increased flexibility in such environments and the need for more awareness of seasonality and its impacts, the impact this has on plants and animals and on planning. Uh, there were lots of sites that we wanted to work on and then we couldn't work because the birds hadn't left yet and that's the bird's thing to not leave then. So, you know, we just had to work around that. Um, working with the National Trust and Heritage Futures, we've become... Uh, oh, no, I just said that, and I've said it twice in here. Um, yeah, we've become much more aware of the tensions generally and the false division between cultural and natural heritage. For Heritage Futures, working alongside citizen um, and citizen volunteers means they've mu been much better able to understand what motivates professionals and volunteers to get involved in archaeology, how and why we value archaeological sites and features, how we understand and rationalise transformation and loss, and what this means for, shape, for shaping future legacies. For citizen volunteers as well, it's been a really great opportunity to be involved in a much wider project with a wider range of views and a wider range of people to talk to about their different areas of expertise. Um, they've really had, and I think particularly through this film, um, we have really nice feedback on this, that they've had the opportunity to vocalise and really reflect on what they think beyond um, recording the site and aiding with interpretation. They've also felt that their contribution has been, through working with Heritage Futures, even more highly valued and recognised beyond the immediate project. Um, and I think the, the, the final thing I'd like to say on that, actually, is not forgetting working with the volunteers themselves. Um, Mike, who you heard um, speaking in the film, he was a, the telecoms engineer who'd actually worked on Orford Ness. And he hadn't worked on any of the military stuff he'd worked on sites since. But he brought a huge amount of, of understanding when looking at features um, and, interpreting, and interpreting them, like knowledge that we just wouldn't have because we have the specialist telecoms knowledge and a special telecoms brain and understanding as well, which was brilliant. Um, Alan and Shipwright produced some fantastic scale drawings, although he'd never done any archaeology before. Um, and another, another volunteer, Mike, who worked in construction, brought a brilliant amount of knowledge to actually just how things were built, how concrete structures were made, which was great, because I love concrete and I learned more about it. Um, we also worked with an artist, Deborah Shipley, um, and she brought a really interesting understanding when we were working there, just in the different ways that people saw what we were doing, but also in the different ways that she would interpret the past of the site. Um, and I think I would actually just go on to say then that working with volunteers is probably one of the most transdisciplinary things that you'll ever find yourself doing, and it was brilliant. Um, so it leaves me to say thank you from me and Nadia and um, all those we collaborated with. Thank you. Thank you.